Hello there, fellow Battle Brothers, and welcome to your weekly dose of the Space Marine Chapters lore. You may find this funny, but prior to making this video, I found myself thinking that it's actually been a long time since we covered an Ultramarine successor. And lo and behold, while searching for a new chapter to cover, I find the Wardens of Orask. I'm not entirely sure how that is pronounced, whether it is Orask or Orask. If any of you know for certain though, do feel free to correct me. So, a brand new chapter to get into, and listen to some stories of their campaigns. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Wardens of Orask were created sometime during the first centuries of M34, during the catastrophic event known only as the Pale Wasting, when the Imperium was threatened by a star-spawned plague of mysterious Xenos hailing from the Ghoul Stars. This region of space was part of the Halo Stars located beyond the furthest reaches of known space, northeast of the Ultima Segmentum in the Eastern Fringe. The Wardens of Orask, alongside several other newly created chapters, were a defensive countermeasure to help fight against these Xenos. Their so-called Nightmare Engines had swept away scores of worlds and slaughtered countless people. Granted a substantial fleet of warships, the chapter became a fleet-based one, highly mobile counter-strike force, which would help to stem the tide of the encroaching threat and were later credited with having played a vital role in unmaking that which cannot die. Much of the evidence relating to this threat had been censored or purposefully destroyed, and those partial records which may have been uncovered suggest that more than one space marine chapter might have been entirely destroyed in the course of the conflict. Created during the seventh founding, upon their inception, command of the newly created chapter was given to one Decius Caecilius Maximus who would be the first Patriarch and Polemarchus of the as-yet-unnamed chapter. Maximus was a former captain of the Ultramarine's third company, who was highly regarded by his fellow commanders and battle brothers. He had gathered many honors during his illustrious career, and was lauded by several senior commanders of various military arms of the Imperium, and was known to the High Lords of Terra themselves. Trusted implicitly by his chapter master, Captain Maximus was granted the honor of assuming command of the newly formed chapter. Following their intervention during the Pale Wasting, and the successful nullification of that Xeno's menace, the new chapter was granted stewardship over the sentinel world of Orask in the fringes of Imperial space. And here, they have stood as wardens over the outlying ghoul stars, and the nightmarish threats that have periodically sailed forth to waylay the realm of the Emperor. Some notable campaigns of theirs include The Chemos Crusade in M35 Not to be confused with the Emperor's children homeworld of Chemos. This Chemos Crusade was an imperial campaign that took place within the Orc Empire of the notorious overlord Krotzmar Skullsplitter. Chemos, the capital world of this empire, and the site of the final assault lay in the Persepolis system of the galaxy's Pelagron sector. The chapter called the Sable Lions employed the use of their first company to destroy the Orc Empire by removing its head. The Crusade fleet of the Wardens of Orosk, supported by Imperial Guard and other Imperial forces like Titans of the Mechanicum, attacked the outer planets of the Pelagron system too. The offensive was a decoy though, although it proved to be quite effective. Many of the Orc vessels rushed to prevent the attack on the outer planets, leaving the central world dangerously vulnerable and exposed to the waiting body of the Imperial forces, led by the Astartes of the Sable Lions. The Sable Lions fleet headed right at the central planet, and more specifically for the fortress palace of Krotzmar. At the height of the campaign, the chapter master, Sargon Akkad, also known as the Great Lion, and his Terminator armored elite successfully confronted the Overlord and his retinue of knobs. With the death of their leader, the Orc forces collapsed into infighting, and the battle for Kaimos became a massacre. The remainder of the Pelagron sector was subdued by the forces of the Crusade, and returned to Imperial rule within the year, as the Orc Empire had completely fragmented upon hearing of their master's death, and various knobs declared themselves new warlords and fought each other for control. The Daylon Campaign 
In 428 M35, the vital industrial world of Daylon fell into anarchy and open insurrection. The Wardens of Oras committed a strike force of the 3rd and 6th Companies. The Companies were garrisoned aboard the Emperor-class battleship Morpheus during the operation. The force was initially responsible for spearheading the invasion of Daylon and neutralizing the planet's defenses. But not everything went as planned. During the eventual retreat of the Imperial forces from Katos, the Wardens were tasked with forming the Rear Guard and ensuring that the Imperial forces and the Loyalists were able to flee in relative safety. The purging of Roduno occurred in 567 M35. This was an Imperial castigation campaign carried out by the entirety of the Wardens of Oras chapter upon the important hive world of Roduno, located in the Segmentum Ultima. During the campaign to put down the planet-wide insurrection, the chapter discovered that not only was the insurrection instituted by hidden Chaos cults, but they were also allied with a warband of Chaos known, quite originally, as the Merciless. This was a force made up of former Iron Warriors, and they were known for laying waste to entire Imperial worlds. As the Wardens made Planetfall, they were met by the first and third companies of the Blades of Elysium chapter which were already engaged in heavy combat against the forces of Chaos. Although initially both chapters almost came to blows over how to proceed, they both eventually put aside their differences in order to defeat both the Insurrectionists and the Merciless. The Wardens would suffer heavy losses to their first company and held the Blades of Elysium responsible for the losses of their veterans, a stain on their honor that was never forgiven. The smoldering of Roth occurred in 965 M35. In the later centuries of M35, several systems located adjacent to the infamous Terran reality known as the Maelstrom were subjected to a massive invasion by the forces of Chaos. During this period, severe warp surges cut off many of the systems from the rest of the Imperium, making warp travel a dangerous prospect at best. This volatile region of the galaxy had long been subjected to attacks by those following the Dark Gods, as well as renegades who sought refuge within the hellish realm of the Maelstrom. For decades, the word bearers and their cultist allies lorded over these helpless systems. Unwilling to let this stand any longer, an Imperial Crusade was called by the authorities, and the call to arms was sent throughout the Segmentum. Many Imperial Guard regiments, Adeptus Mechanicus Skitari units, and Orders of the Adeptus Sororitas answered the call, and they were quickly joined by a trio of bellicose and unforgiving Space Marine chapters, including the Wardens of Oras, the Tempest Knights, and the Imperious Ravagers. The Crusade launched a multi-pronged attack into the closest system and began to break the lines of the heretics. Using rapid strike forces, the three chapters spearheaded the Imperial Assault and won hundreds of engagements, but only managed to slow the heretics down, as they focused the majority of their efforts on the worlds being overrun by demon legions. The long and bloody conflict culminated in an epic final confrontation upon the Shrine World of Pictoris, where the forces of Chaos had covered the entire surface with blasphemous temples to the Dark Gods. The Tempest Knights and their brothers broke the back of the Chaos Warlords and put every single traitor to the sword, leaving behind hundreds of mounds of piled skulls. A grotesque display to serve as a stark reminder and a dire warning to those that made deals with the ruinous powers. Although I believe Korn was probably happy enough. In 842 M36, an Imperial campaign, which had the 2nd and 9th companies of the Wardens of Oras attached to it, laid siege to the orcs of Wa Bone Smasher, who, in their own turn, were besieging the Imperial Antilla system. For three weeks, the chapter faced wave after wave of orcs, hurling themselves at their siege lines and defeating the Xenos with precision bolter fire and many thunderfire cannons. In the final battle of that war, the Praetorians of the First Company boarded and destroyed Bone Smasher's warship. The Trianguli execution occurred in 206 M37. An Alpha Legion warband, led by the infamous demon prince Ranges Nightbane, invaded the jungle planet of Trianguli to salvage an ancient and long forgotten Imperator class Titan. Infiltrating the few populated cities on the planet, 
The operatives of the Alpha Legion stirred up dissent among the disgruntled miners and workers there, who would break out into an open insurrection against Imperial rule. Capitalizing on the chaos erupting across the planet, the Alpha Legion secretly made their way towards the long-lost Titan, before the Imperial authorities were any the wiser that they were even there. Sending an astropathic call for aid, the Wardens of Orask chapter quickly responded. They dispatched Captain Myrex, the stalwart commander that led elements from the Chapter 3rd and 8th companies to the jungle world, to eliminate both the rebellion and to drive the traitors from the world. Despite the fact that the Alpha Legion was making use of the now captured God Engine, the Wardens opted to attack the heretic legionaries in an all-out drop assault. At first it seemed like a bold tactical choice, it seemed to drive the enemy back. But then the monstrous war engine void shield generators and weapon batteries came online, and that had devastating consequences for the task force. Many Wardens of Oras Castartes fell that day. The Wardens were afraid that the only course open to them now was to end the threat outright, by enacting exterminatus upon Trianguli. Fortunately, aid would arrive in the form of the Bellicose Imperious Ravagers Chapter's 4th Company. As the Warden's ferocious allies launched their own attack at the Alpha Legion Bastion from below, the Wardens would use their Storm Ravens to initiate a set of drop assaults against the secondary plasma reactors powering the Titan weaponry. The Wardens would neutralize the Titan's defenses, and the Ravagers would swarm into the massive war machine's lower levels. Demon Prince Aranges ultimately escaped, leaving his followers behind to be savagely exterminated by the Scions of Gilliman. Quite in character for an Alpha Legion leader, to be honest, especially one corrupted by chaos. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Wardens of Orask chapter and their war stories for today. This is not even their entire history though, let alone all the lore on them, so I will definitely return to them in the future with a second video. Of course, if you guys enjoy them as well, obviously. They do have a lot of interesting ranks and titles, so their organization is something I would really like to cover next. Anyway, what about you? What are your thoughts on the Wardens of Orask? Did you ever hear about them before? Are they among your favorite homebrew chapters? As always, I would like to read your thoughts on them in the comments below. If you found the episode informative, please consider leaving a like, share and subscribe for future content. The Emperor Protects.